Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to share my story of why I chose to stay in the UK. A bit of background about myself, before coming abroad, I received all my prior education in my home country in China. I attended Chinese kindergarten, primary school, middle school, high school, and only considered coming abroad after graduating from high school. So in today's video, I'm going to cover what's the trigger for me coming abroad to study, why I chose to study in the UK rather than other countries in the world, and why I chose to stay after finishing my graduate study. So without further ado, let's get started. So the trigger of me coming abroad is actually because of my college entrance exam in China. If you have ever heard of the Chinese college entrance exam, it was famous for being the most important exam in your life. And the result of that exam is deciding where you go for the rest of your life. So unfortunately, I up. So let's say if I was the top 10% of my class when I perform normally, then in this college entrance exam, I was the bottom 10% of my class. It came as a complete shock to the family. I was very surprised by the result as well. It was like a shameful moment. I guess in my high school life. I had an option to go back to high school, redo my whole final year again, and then re-prep for the exam. But after a long consideration, I decided not to do so because it will bring me so much pressure. I don't think it will be good for my mental health as well. And I cannot afford another failure. So I started to consider the option of going abroad. So when my parents and I started the discussion of going abroad, we had four countries on the list. We had the US, UK, Australia and Canada. And amongst these four countries, US and Australia were the most popular countries back then. We had no idea which country to went for at the beginning, so we literally started our Google search being what are the universities in da -da -da, the country name. Because the new year intake was just around the corner, so we wanted to make our decision fast. I don't think it took us too long to rule out Canada because there was not many precedent cases in where I stay that people go out to Canada to study. Like I mentioned before, US and Australia were the most popular destinations. And on the basis of that, it seems less efficient to spend our time researching for a country with not many precedent cases to follow when there are many more options to explore in other countries. Then we have Australia, UK and US left. I think we ruled out Australia the second and the reason was 50-50. One half of the reason was purely because of my personal preference because despite all the good things about Australia, I was not feeling too attracted to the country. If I'm going abroad at 17 years old with no overseas experience whatsoever, I want to go to a country that I can feel a sense of closeness, familiarity or sense of belongings if you have to say so. But I didn't feel that much strongly about Australia back then. The other half of the reason was ironically because of its popularity as there have been so many people going to Australia to study, I was worried if I moved there, I would be staying too close to my own community so that I cannot speak English properly, which then probably lost the point of going abroad. So that's why we ruled out Australia. Now we have UK and US left and the decision was actually not too hard to make. We talked to a few advisors, explained our situations, and asked about the rankings of the universities, the quality of the education, the tuition fees, and did a bit of search on the neighborhood, and we landed on the UK quite quickly. I think back in 2013, which is the year when I went abroad, if I want to attend a US public school in a relatively good ranking, the tuition fee will be around 30K US dollars each year while as that in the UK will be around 11k pounds, which is equivalent to 15k US dollars per year. Plus the undergrad study in the US is four years, while as that in the UK is three years. I think to complete an undergrad degree, US is like double the expense of the UK. So the UK was the more affordable option for me back then. Plus considering the safety element, there was no gun in the UK my parent will be more relieved on the safety side of things. So we chose UK with very little hesitation. 
And the rest is history. I studied accounting finance in my undergrad years, and I was lucky enough to get an internship, then the graduate job in the same industry. I liked my first job. It was with the right company, with the right training, and off to a right start. And from then on, I was gradually able to tell what I enjoyed, what I not enjoyed, and I was able to adapt and switch based on that. I'm now at the job where I felt I have the right amount of challenge. I have been relatively content with what I have currently. If you're interested in my career journey, I'm happy to cover it in another video. So looking back, my story coming abroad came as a completely unexpected surprise, but I thoroughly appreciate the trigger, the journey, and my family's support throughout. Consideration-wise, I would say my considerations have been really general. Quality of the education, the affordability, and safetyness. I felt like I've gained maturity coming through this journey at an accelerated rate. If you were asking me if I would recommend coming abroad or if you should consider going abroad at some point in your life, I would highly recommend if it's something feasible on your life agenda. But what I would say is wherever you go, it will be down to you to make this experience special. So good luck with your adventure if you are heading to one. Bye, I'll see you next time.